world like mine, which comes all the way from uh, Makwene, that is Malili, uh, down to Kenanian, down to Langoon, down to almost Mudwani. People were told to be, come for the checks at Chumbi uh, Chiefs Camp. First of all, to travel, most of the people spend a lot of money uh, because from Kenanye to Chumbi, you have to spend about 500 shillings. Therefore, People came with large numbers on the speaker, and the checks were less than even 600,000. I can ascertain because what we received, although some of the checks got lost, because what the DG did after the people, the crowd, asked him how many, how much money is he giving out, he couldn't say. So he did it in a hurry. He read a few checks, and then he handed over the checks to. To the to the to the ward and decision, uh, ward uh, ward and and mean and decision what what do you call them, and insertors. So when you are given the checks, which we didn't know even the number, the people scrambled, uh, and some of the checks were lost, because you know the check is written under secondary school, and then the students are there. So when you remove, you can remove the names and put two or three, or you put your son. To have that 40,000 or 50,000. So, so, Madam Speaker, we couldn't even ascertain to know how many students you receive. Therefore, Madam Speaker, this is a bit embarrassing to our uh, government because these honorable members used to give checks very well, even if they are little, very well. They distribute very well. And the people were told this is what we have. Up to today, Honorable Speaker, we don't know how much money, because it was given by the, um, I mean the, by the executive. On a speaker, the other issue is, if we have put 2 million, we have received 900, can we know and understand where the other money has gone? On a speaker, I think this high time we summon the, 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 the Department of Education, the CC and the CO, and also uh, the, 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 the department, uh, I mean uh, finance department under the CEC deputy governor, uh, uh, engineer Maliti. Because, honorable speaker, we cannot continue putting money in departments and then we continue having that kind of confusion of people, uh, uh, I mean, uh, eating public money. And then the members, honorable members, are blamed on the ground by the people that we are not fighting, we are not doing anything. On a speaker, you can see our, our senator, who I don't think whether she knows her job, because she's now campaigning on the names of honorable members, which, 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 which I condemn on the highest point. Because I, I, I don't think that is how senators work. I doubt, I saw Ngunga sometimes wrote something, which I understand that was clear. Honorable Ngunga. No, I, I, and I now believe Sometimes order, order, education order, is order very members, important. Order. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, order members, order. Honorable Speaker, we, we cannot, we cannot, and I'm saying we have to defend our names. Our work is to pass the budget, oversight, and congregation with our people. So we have done that. I don't know why the senator is on us. So, um, so what, 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 what I'm saying, Honorable Speaker. Let us have those people's amount and the honorable members, we have no time. There is no need of uh, calling uh, Ndu Mokena. Call it Ndu for it. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable DS. Sorry, Honorable DS, then allow me, Thank Honorable you. Minority Leader. Because I'd asked him to hold on for a while. It's okay. Go ahead. Then we have the honourable minority leader. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker, for giving me this time. Uh, my name is Honourable Paul Museku. I represent the great people of Mumbone North. First and foremost, I would like to congratulate Honourable Helen Detti for the statement she has brought before the House 
seeking to, see, seeking to know clarification on the issue of bursaries. Um, Honorable Speaker, yes, as the other members have said, we as a house did provide for 2 million shillings in the budget for bursaries for this year. And I'm glad in her statement she has sought to seek when the remaining balance of 1.1 million shillings is going to be disbursed. We are aware that budgets are opened halfway. And therefore, you find that the Treasury has opened a budget for six months. And after opening the budget for six months, after the six months, they open the budget for the other six months. And we are therefore aware that the first half of the year has gone by, and therefore the processing of the one million. The key thing here is for us to get a clear cut timetable on when we are going to get, because I am aware the second half budget has been opened in Ithmis. When we are going to be able to get the disbursement of the remaining 1.1 million, putting into consideration the fact that as from April, end of April, this assembly will be off to campaign mode because May, June, July is the official campaign period. And we need to ensure that by that time, the, bus the balance of the bursary has been disbursed to the various institutions. Talking about the amounts is key, but also talking about the process which was used or which we use in disbursement of the bursaries is as important as the money itself. The Honorable Member, Honorable Mark Mwendo, the Majority Leader, said that in his ward, the same thing with Honorable Cosmas Masasi, they have a very huge ward with very many people who have applied for bursaries. In my ward, Mumbune North, on average, I get more than 3,000 people applying for bursaries within the ward. And yet, you are given 900,000 shillings to distribute. Which means, therefore, that there has to be a certain criteria which is used by the budget, com the budget committee. It's not budget committee, but bursary committee, which has been uh, constituted in the world, a criteria of determining how many people you are going to give from the 2,000 to fit into 900,000. That criteria follows guidelines which have been given people with disabilities, single mothers, where there is no income. There is a certain criteria which is used in determining this. Now, when the deputy governor, in his wisdom, decides to take the checks to the people and the calls them, and they come, the 2,000, and he has the checks, and he does not, he is not the bursary committee, he does not know the criteria which is used, the only thing which is going to be caused on the ground is chaos. Because the 2,000 people will come there and each will be expecting to get a check. And he does not have the criteria for which what was used in determining <laughs> the number of people. If, for example, it's only 300 people on that list, what criteria was used in determining the 300, he does not have. But the minute you announce you're going to give bursary, the entire 2,000 people will come. So the process of doing it is as important as the money itself. And we would like to urge the executive to follow the guidelines themselves they have issued in which they give to the bursary committees so that when we are disbursing these funds, there is seen to be equity. I was shocked to see that these people were reading checks. Like from my area, you hear somebody saying, uh, check for... Kangundo High School, we have a check here for Kangundo High School, uh, it's totaling to 40,000. Any parent here for Kangundo High School, a parent raises their hand, and I'm told they are given the check for 40,000. Now, if attached to that is 20, 30 names for that money. If this parent just plugs out that and writes a list, their own list of five people, including paying full fees, school fees full for their children, and take to the school, 
who will find out? Because the office of these honorable members makes sure that when checks are delivered, they are delivered to the institution and the list attached is delivered and the insured receipts are given so that there is accountability even to the fund itself. It is therefore uh, a bit annoying, really, to see that simply because, and I do not understand, uh, Honorable Speaker, who informed uh, uh, the DG that bursaries have votes. They don't. The people outside there know that bursaries is their right. And if you go there with the bursaries thinking you are going to get a vote, <laughs> you are only going to make yourself appear weak because you are not going to be able to give the 2,000 people since there are only 300 people have been given. So what we would like to see is when are we going to get the balance of 1.1 million? And, would, and I would like us, as a house, to put a caveat and say this money must be paid by latest March. By latest March of this year. So that we are sure that the entire bursary, as provided in the, bursary, in the, in the, in the fund, has been disbursed. This issue the majority has talked about, of the senator, going all over the place and telling people that the honorable members of this house are not doing their work. I would like to put it very clearly. She needs to understand her job first. Reason being, when you go and tell the public that we get 10 billion, and these people, every year they get 10 billion, you do not even seem to understand there is recurrent expenditure and development expenditure. So people think the entire 10 billion is supposed to be given for development without knowing that we have more than 7,000 employees who are also getting salaries from the same 10 billion. But you go blaming honorable members and saying the house, and I was even shocked she had the audacity of mentioning honorable Madam Speaker into her own, into her own issue. Does the Speaker debate in this house? Does the speaker de de determine the, the, the things which are done in that house? This thought is the preserve of honorable members. And therefore, trying to drag Madam Speaker into this issue, I found it quite out of order. And therefore, we condemn what she said the strongest terms possible and tell her to do her homework. The oversight we have done in this house over the last five years cannot be negated by somebody who has not done their homework. And the, the, the audit reports Point of information. which come from this house, the audit reports... Point of information. What is the information, Honorable Ndawa? And remember, we are not even debating. Yes, I just want to inform my brother here, Honorable Deputy Speaker, that the by-election for the senator, she was elected alone. So when she went to the parliament, others had already been done in induction. So she was not inducted. Honorable so uh, Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Judas Dawa. And on that note, we would like to advise the Senate to be doing proper induction. Uh, so in conclusion, therefore, it is important for the Senator to understand that even the audit reports which come before this House, like the report which the Honorable Madam Speaker has committed the Committee of Public Accounts and Investment, and Investment, those reports go to the Senate before they even come here. A copy goes to the Senate, another copy comes here. And therefore, it is our duty to ensure that when those audit reports get there, she does proper oversight by ensuring that she calls the governor and those who are in, uh, accountable for the budget and he derogates them, not passing the buck downwards to honorable members. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, honorable, honorable. Yes, honorable minority leader. I'll come to you, honorable Johanna. Yeah, thank you very much, our honorable speaker. I'm Alex Kamitu, uh, MCA Talawad and leader of minority in this great house. Uh, Madam Speaker, one thing is that uh, uh, I stand here to applaud the statement that has been done by my sister, Honorable Ellen, in regard and relationship to the disbursement of the, the bursaries. 
Uh, Madam Speaker, as you have heard from uh, the honorable members who have spoken, uh, in regard to issuance of bursaries into the 40 wards, there is always a procedure. To start with, Madam Speaker, everybody is aware that, uh, and even the executive, they are aware, that uh, there, is, uh, there is one, there is a committee in the bursary, in the other wards, the bursary committee. And again, Madam Speaker, we normally do the public participation. So I'm talking on regard that uh, at this time the practice was not uh, uh, carried out uh, properly, uh, procedurally, because one, uh, uh, bursaries given to the wards. When the public participation are carried out in the wards, there is a list of all the beneficials. So on that regard, there is always a list with the bursary committee in the each uh, ward. And uh, it is that list again, Madam Speaker, that uh, procedurally and uh, in manner of uh, being transparent, it is the same list that is used. It is returned to the education department so that it enables the education department to write the checks according to the list that uh, was given into the words. So on this regard, Madam Speaker, I'm saying the same list, the same checks, procedurally were supposed to be returned to the world so that they are the same people during the participation who identified the needy, the needy students. So it was messy uh, this time, Madam Speaker, without hiding anything. It was quite messy that uh, the right procedures, the right process was not carried out. That is why you are hearing complaints from all the four towards. So my standing here, Madam Speaker, is now the Education Committee should come up with those, uh, with those uh, complaints from each ward because if I'm called by the, uh, by, by the uh, department, of, I mean uh, by the Committee of Education, I'll give them my grievances, my observations that I made that the procedure was not carried out properly. And again, I don't want to repeat what the Honorable Member have said, but it is also important, Madam Speaker, that uh, we should know and when the remaining balance of the bursary will be issued so that we may again and quickly before April, before April uh, during the campaign time, so that we may issue. And this time around, Madam Speaker, because we have seen there was a mistake, then we, we should also inform the executive that they should go as per what the regulation of bursaries has been is supposed to be done. Otherwise, I stand to say, uh, this time around, Madam Speaker, won't again agree, or I mean, we wouldn't like to, to see that bad procedure that was carried out. Otherwise, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minority Leader, Honorable Johanna. I'll come to you, Honorable Ngunga. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I stand to support uh, the statement by Honorable Helen. Uh, Honorable Speaker, <clears throat> uh, as I stand to echo the words of the previous speakers, I would like also to state that the timing is also very important. Madam Speaker, the time we decided to, through the Deputy Governor, to go around giving out the bursaries when the checks were really ready in the month of December, we should have organized ourselves to present the checks even when the students were leaving for school. There are those who are schooling in far away schools, and therefore it would, also, it would only have been wise to give out the checks as they go back to the school. We were now faced with a challenge of organizing on how the checks were to get to such institutions, and in that mix, still up to now, we have some names others transferred to other schools, others missing, and therefore we need to relook at the process and also the timing. Madam Speaker, uh, 800,000 is a drop in the ocean, especially during these time, hard times, when most parents lost jobs, when there are so many hardships even in terms of getting food uh, in the families, the only way we would have assisted these kids was even uh, either during a supplementary like the one we are expecting, 
to look for monies here and there to add on to the bursary kit and assist these kids. Madam Speaker, before I sit, let me also remind our Senator Kavindu that she has a seat in this assembly where she has never sat to address this assembly. She cannot be addressing the assembly from funeral gatherings, from campaign rallies. If she is serious, our work was to engage with this assembly. We look at the areas where there are serious issues, and then she presents the same to the Senate. We have not had a summon, either the executive or even this assembly in the Senate, if she is serious with whatever she is doing. I would request or demand that she now uh, adopts other strategies of campaigning other than just uh, uh, making noise out there and tarnishing the names of these honorable members, including our speaker who is doing our work. Uh, therefore, Madam Speaker, I wish to stop there and echo and support uh, the statement. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Jana. Honorable Ngunga. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. They are punishing you by giving that size of a mic. <laughs> Yes, thank you. thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to also maybe add my voice to the debate that is ongoing. And I would like to say that, uh, like the colleagues who have spoken, I think the issue of uh, bursary was mishandled, uh, totally mishandled, and actually sometimes, in some words, it turned out chaotic. And that uh, endangering even uh, the people who had been invited. Like I think Honorable Majority has said, when members are called, members are called to a gathering by a leader, and uh, there are benefits that are supposed to be coming out of that meeting, and they find that the benefits are not equal or they are not fair, then of course chaos are, are likely to erupt. And I think that was the case in Mutituni, that was the case in, uh, I think, Mavoko, and many other places. I would say, Madam Speaker, here is what it was actually a purely a matter of a procedure. Bursaries had been awarded by the bursary committees, and I would have imagined a situation like we have done before, where we launch all of us together, and then particular officers carry the checks and I should, without having to look at politics. You know what is affecting us, Madam Speaker, here in this county? I think people have become too political. And some leaders who are very weak are trying to gain what we call public sympathy. <laughs> and you see, even if we end up we ain't behind those cocoon, the truth will easily get to be known. The deputy governor did not need to use that as a way of campaigning. I actually personally was very opposed to that uh, that way. It was like when you take Mua, for example, and you bring the people next to A&L and, and, uh, Hotel, and you tell them the bursary is going to... Actually, uh, Madam Speaker, I was only fortunate because they arrived at my place at 9 o'clock. So by the time people were waking up, and I was also quick uh, to disperse them. So with 20 minutes, and we were done. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have suffered the same fate that befell my colleagues. So, Madam Speaker, my call is in, in, because we are demanding for the remainder of the balance that was allocated, and actually that must be done, and when is actually the question. Madam Speaker, we want to demand that uh, next time that this bursary is being dispersed, let the bursary committees be in charge, and the area MCS as we have always done. The other thing about uh, the Senator, it's also unfortunate, it's actually also trying to get uh, to look for, uh, you know, and call for popularity. In a funeral occasion, or in occasions where members of uh, this assembly are not there, and we are being accused even of things that are not even supposed to be ours, when she says that we have failed, what have we failed to do? You know, that is one of the questions that somebody should be able to ask her. Those of you who are close to her, and you remember most of us who are very opposed to her, <laughs> but you said, Kava Mama. But I'm saying, Mosiwa Tuko, Utungala Balanza. So we need to raise up to the occasion and raise up. We are 40 of us elected and 19 who can support us. We need to And one of the answers is to tell her the mandate that she got was the other day. But she's misusing that mandate. Election time is just about, it's actually cut on face. It's actually next, next what, uh, five, six months. So if she moves on that, I think I'm doing, she was brought in by this assembly. It is this assembly that is also going to, to chase her away. And I will be part of those ones who are, who are, who are in the forefront to chase her away. Because I know she's not competent. 
and the incompetence now is being exhibited. And you know what, what happens, Madam Speaker? It's a false if a lie is told over and over again and is not corrected. It is likely to be seen as a truth. So if we let the senator now keep on lying people, and she has a lot of I mean, airtime, if we let her uh, be given that kind of airtime where we are not responding, we are likely to suffer the same fate that suffered the colleagues of Honorable Kamito here, the other, the, other, the other assembly, where 39 of them went away, not mistakes of their, their own. I am not ready to go home because of somebody. Me, I'm ready to defend my position vehemently and following the truth. So I'll be the first one so, to be up in the... I heard I'm mentioning your name, saying that you've led us into failure. Why have we failed? Why have we failed? I have heard the lady, I've heard the lady seriously condemning activities that are not of our doing. Where do we come into the hospital? Why are we into the hospital, surely? Where, when she says that we have, there's no medicine in the hospital, are we supposed to be there? Are we chief officers? Are we ministers of the health? These are some of the things, Madam Speaker, we say education is very important. And as we go to this general election, we must ensure, those of you who are even competing with you against, against you, Madam Speaker, we must look at, we must raise the bar, education bar. So some, some of these basics, basic things, she doesn't have honorable bond she doesn't have to go to get school. These, some of these things are basics. To know the role of an MCA, the role of an MP, they are basics. So, Madam Speaker, I want to support those who have spoken that, Madam Speaker, the senator must be disciplined. She must be disciplined. Because out there, the public thinks that, uh, you know, she's the new kid in the block. So she's the one who is pointing where mistakes are. But in my opinion, she's misleading the whole county. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And as we, as we engage, I want to ask our colleague, members of Assembly, you know, we are just around the campaign time now. Let us uphold the kind of discipline that we have always uphold, uh, upheld. We have been very open to negotiation. Let us negotiate. Let us negotiate when, when it's possible. Let us not look as agitators. There's a big difference between achieving uh, as a negotiator and agitating. When you start agitating, you agitate for a long time and you don't achieve anything. But negotiators will be able to negotiate and get things done. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank Point you. of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order. Point of order, Honorable Miseku. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I stand on point of order number 27 uh, to request for extension of time. Honorable Speaker, I'm not aware that uh, order number 27, sub order 2, provides that the Speaker shall interrupt business at 12.30 p.m. for the morning sitting. I'm aware that standing order number 27, sub order 3, provides that the House may resolve to extend its sitting time. I'm aware that standing order number 27, sub order 4, requires motion to extend sitting time to be moved at least 30 minutes before the time uh, appointed of adjournment. Honorable Speaker, I therefore beg to move the motion that the House resolves to extend its sitting time until the business on hand is completed. And I re request Honorable Moses Mita, uh, the Majority Whip of the House, to second my motion. Honorable Moses. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. My name is Honorable Moses Mita, and I second the motion by the Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable members, I note that uh, this is a procedural motion, but uh, because it is your right to break when you are supposed to break under the standing orders, allow me just to propose uh, the motion so that we can see if there's any member who would be opposed to the extension, so that uh, I propose the question that uh, the House resolves to extend its sitting time until the business in the order paper for today sitting, morning sitting, sorry, is completed. Do we have any member who'd want to comment on that proposed motion? Right. So members, let me put the question that the House resolves to extend its sitting time until the business in the order paper for today's sitting, morning sitting is completed. As many as of the opinion say aye. aye. As many as of the contrary opinion say nay, yes have it. So we extend the sitting, honorable members, until the, or the business on the order paper is completed. 
I noted that there were some members who wanted to make a comment. We have Honorable Alice and Honorable Nicholas, and then we stop it at that. Honorable Jeremiah, you wish to comment? Right. Let's go on, Honorable Alice. Asanti, be speaker, kwa kunipa nafasi. Majina angu ni mwishma Alice Nzioka. Nimeteuliwa na chama chama endeleo chap chap. Mwishmiwa Alice. I know you like enjoying the carpet. Pardon? Pardon, Madam Speaker. Sorry, Sorry Madam Speaker. Proceed, proceed. Ms. Speaker, nilifanikiwa kuwa katika bunge amalo lilikuwa limechaguliwa bunge la kwanza. Katika mfumo wa ugatuzi, na nikafanikiwa tena kuwa katika hili bunge la pili. Na shukuru mungu. Bispika ni kujulishe kwamba kama kuna bunge ambao ilichaguliwa na wanainti na ambao inajua kazi yake ni hii bunge ambaye muda wake unaenda kuisha. Bispika ni kikumbuka mwanzo mwanzo wa hii bunge wakati ambapo tulianza. Kuna kesi sasa iko kotini na sijui kama uamuzi ulitolewa Kuna ma maaziri ambao aliteuliwa katika serikali ya Machakos na ikapelekwa kotini. Pili, waziri wetu wa pesa pia kuna kesi kotini. Na bispika ukiangalia vizuri sana utakuta ayo ndiyo majukumu ambao bunge linapaswa kufanya. Bispika ni makosa ya litendeka. Na uliza wabunge wenzangu ilo jambo lisitendeke tena tunaendelea tuna kufikia wakati wa uchaguzi na hata kama uko kwenye chama gani usimchague mtu eti sababu ameletwa na chama ni sababu muangalie umchunguze kama na yote ambayo anatakiwa ili kuchaguliwa seneta wa Machakos kulikuwa na malalamishi Na kila mtu wakaona kwamba hakuwa na sakabadhi ambazo zili kuwa zinatakiwa. Na asa ndiyo maana tumefikiwa sisi wote. Wale ambayo walimchagua, wale ambayo walikuwa wamchagui. Maana ajui hata kazi yake mwenyewe. Nataka ni mfahamishe na nauliza wabunge wenzangu. Kwanza tutafute siku na sisi kama wabunge tumpe jibu maana tunaweza. Tumuambie... Sisi kama bunga tumefanya tume kazi yetu. Na pia tumwambie atoke kabisa na mwachane na speaker wa kaunti ya Machakos. Maana sisi tumefanya kazi. Bispika, miaka mitano kama umechaguliwa. Mwaka wa kwanza itakuwa unajijulisha kwa watu ambao wamekuchagua. Hiyo miaka mingine inafuatilia unafanya ile kazi yako. Hawa wabunge ambao wako hapa kila mtu anajua ile kazi amefanya kwake na mimi nashindwa na nashangaa naibu wa gavana wa Machakos usio wakati wa kwenda katika watu kupeleka usaidizi wa, wa masomo maana hiyo sio kazi yake ni katika bunge hili kulitengezwa amri ni kwa ajili ya kupatiana usaidizi wa masomo katika kila wodi ya Machakos tulichagua komiti kwamba kuna wale ambao wanapaswa kufanya hiyo kazi na ndio maana furugu zimekuja hata juzi nimeona wengine walipewa hizo pesa hizo checks na hawajui hawajui anapeleka wapi wengine wako nazo nyumbani mtu amepewa na ajui mahali anapeleka sasa ni ya umuhimu gani kupawa kila mtu afanye kazi yake na kama ulifanya kazi utachaguliwa kama hukufanya ole wako Sisi kama wabunge ni lazima. Kuna msemo wa kikamba unasemwa ikomba dine ya yiku. Ukiuliza seneta wa machako sata kuambia. What is the meaning of that? Bispeaker. What is the meaning of that word in kikamba? Because oh, there, is, there is a translator. Honorable Ndawa, I'm told you are the one who normally translates. Bispeaker. Wakati nitampa nitakupa unipe wakati 
nitamuuliza mkufunzi wangu mheshimiwa ndawa najua ataniambia lafu bunge lingine nikipata wakati mwingine nitakuelezea bi speaker sisi utamu wetu ama ladha yetu kama wabunga ujaisha tumefanya kazi ambayo tulipaswa kufanya na najua Mwenyezi Mungu akikupa kazi na uitende anakuona bi speaker sisi kama bunge tumefanya kazi yetu na kama umempa mtu kazi usiingilie maana hata Mungu amri za Mungu zinasema usiseme uongo amri ya Mungu ya nane inasema usiseme uongo na ukivunja amri moja ya kumi, umevunja zote. Ni mwambie seneta wa Machakos aachane na bunge ya Machakos. Na alichaguliwa we, baadhi ya wengi walioko hapa walimsaidia. Na Mungu anaona na anajua. Na nimeshindwa hata ukisikiza matamshi yake ni mtu ambaye hajasoma. Wakati anaenda kwenye mkutano na kusema kwamba munichagulie munichagulie anamaanisha nini kwani yeye ni nani Ma, county ya machakos sisi hatutaki kuwekwa kwenye matope bunga limefanya kazi na hata Mungu anajua bi speaker kazi ya mtu apawe na kama ni kazi ya mheshimiwa aliyechaguliwa waliemchagua kulikuwa wengi na mmoja akachaguliwa na waliona anatosha ambao wamechaguliwa katika wodi ya 40 wapewa nafasi wafanye kazi yao na tukipa nafasi Mungu atawasaidia pia hao wote ambao wamechaguliwa wakirudi hapa senator wa machako sasa wapi ni sasa hata uongozi anaendelea kufedhesha sisi akina mama kuonekana kwamba hatuwezi uongozi sisi akina mama tunaweza na afuate kazi yake maana anajua kama angekuwa seneta ambaye anajua kazi yake kabla mdadisi wa mahesabu hajaleta Nicholas uh, Mwia representing the great people of Katangi ward uh, madam speaker i want to give my contribution on the motion especially on the bursaries for one the bursaries that we are given we are worthy or the value was 900000 per ward but if i can remember very well we passed a budget of 2 million so we still have a, a balance of almost more than 1.1 million which we need as soon as possible so that we can be able to give to our people and again as it was seen by the deputy governor who was going around giving the bursaries in an procedural manner that is not acceptable as we have the the bursary committees in every ward which is their mandate because in the process many checks were lost because there was no proper way of, way of coordinating so we don't expect to see this uh, again in the future and this is what we call the last kicks of a do of a dying doggy so we don't want this kind of um, kangaroo <laughs> don't want this kind of kangaroo arrangements we want the proper procedural way of doing things going forward on the issue of the senator uh, one of the key functions of the senate is uh, oversighting the county executives and that is squarely the major role of the county assembly Madam Speaker, we would be very happy if the Honorable Senator can engage us in, uh, in this role and come here. We welcome her to the Assembly and time to come and tell us what is the real issue rather than making some uh, roadside declarations and saying that as MCAs we have failed. Actually, engaging the MCAs is stooping too low. She should be engaging the Governor and the Executive because she should be more on our side because that is our role. We are still waiting for her to make our maiden speech here and come and we debate on these issues. There is still time. I think it's uh, six or five months to election. So she should come here and tell us what needs to be done because that is the only way forward we can be able to going forward. Also attacking our honorable speaker, that is not acceptable in such uh, functions. We find her not worthy to be called an honorable member. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Honorable Jeremiah Munguti, representing the then uh, ward. First, I'd like to applaud uh, the, the statement which has been brought by Ellen, but, uh, Honorable Ellen, into this house. First, Madam Speaker, it is the right of every 
child to go into school and get the proper education. Therefore, that is a very good statement. And as an assembly, we have the mandate to ensure that every coin that has been budgeted and allocated to education has been disbursed in the right manner by the executive. Ours is the oversight role, which we have done for the last four and a half years, and we are ready to do it until the end of five years. Madam Speaker, as majority have said in this house, those who spoke before me, this time round we have seen different things uh, being done from the executive in the issue of disbursement of the bursaries. What I would urge the executive is that we have allocated very a uh, huge amount of money in issues of bursaries. What we have gotten is only 900,000. And 80 million is not little money by your standards. We expect, as soon as possible, the executive to allocate that money which was passed by this assembly through the recurrent expenditure. So the balance of 1.1 million should be dispersed as soon as possible. And we do public participation as we always do. We have a committee for bursary allocation, which has been doing its work. And through our blessings, we have seen our children get their right in terms of bursaries. But for the last three weeks, things have been different. The issue of executive against the villagers or the, the parents through the students to come and, alloc and give checks, it was very threatening to the members of this assembly because it is not something which should be given any time so that we can uh, get the bursaries in due time. First, Mr. S Madam Speaker, is that uh, it is the right of our people to get what is rightfully theirs because the money which we are giving our people through the bursaries, it is the tax that they pay through the things which they do by buying things and also the money being given back to the uh, treasury. Uh, the other thing is about our senator who has been walking out of the congregation in funerals and uh, uh, uttering uh, words through, the, through the, 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 the podium which he addresses to the members of this assembly. It is quite unfortunate that uh, when we were doing the by-elections, majority of us here supported the Senate. And uh, some of us said it was not the right person. And true to my words, Madam Speaker, I have realized this is the wrong person who entered into this seat. Because maybe she has not been inducted well on the roles of a senator the roles of the counter assembly and the roles of the executive. Because if she knew all these things, she could not be uttering such statements in the funeral gatherings. Madam Speaker, as many speakers have said here, her seat is just here. She could be coming into this assembly and tell us what she wants us to discuss about. And therefore, we are condemning our statement in the strongest term possible. And we are ready to answer her. And as members of this assembly, we must be respected. And the only time to be respected is when we are going to give our statement to the Senate. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Uh, I, I am going to face each other in this house. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Kalumu, one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Francis Kalumu, representing the people of Kirimani. I would like to say that uh, on Bashar, Bashar issues, issuance, it was wrong, the process was wrong, and uh, we have seen what Honorable Francis Maliti can do when he may be by accident, by accident, he becomes a governor. Because that is the way he can do things. And I would warn my people of Machakos County that he is not eligible for elect, to be elected. Because why? 
because he has issued bursary twice and procedure. The first time he did it, we were give, uh, the words were given 850. This time round, he has given 900. We have not seen the last year's audit question on, on, on him. We want to see it. On the issue of Madam Kavindu, as a senator of Machakos, she is not worthy the time I spent. She is not worthy the money I spent. And Madam Speaker, I would like to ask this House to answer her because she is ashaming us. She is ashaming this House. There is a process of doing what she is doing through this House and even speaking to the Governor direct. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Nancy, thank you, Honorable Kalumu. My name is Paul Onyanzi, MCA Kalama Ward. Uh, mimi ni na uchungu mkuba zana. Na waishimiwa wengi wa meongea yu ya Senator Kabindu. Na wa, Senator Kabindu alikuja kwa mashishi, Kalama. Na nika mkaribisha vizuri, na nika mpatia na vasi ya na watu. Na waambie. Ni sisi wale tulikuwa upandi ule mwingine tuleambiwa siku moja tu tuende tukuchakua na tukakupikia kula. Ebu tuambie e, ilikuwa jindio tuambiwa tukupikia kula mala moja. Kwa hivyo na kushukuru. Aliamuka na kusema kwamba tulipewa 15 million kila MCA na governor mutua. Na akasema akaulisa watu. Hii pesa hiko ndani ya matumbo tumbo ya huyo nyanzi huyo 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 huyo. Haka waulisa mutachakua tena. Mimi, ni, 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 si hui kama haba hiko waandishi wapari. Waandike vizuri sana. Sisi, sisi ma MCA tumemukata kama, kama senator wa machakos. Manake hana adabu. Hiyo diyo ni mtaka ni ulise watu wa senator wa machakos. Thank you, Honorable Nyanzi. Honorable Kilu, one minute. Honorable Kamulu, one minute. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Betty, one minute. Uh, first of all, allow me to apologize because I've just arrived. Uh, so do you know what we are talking about? I'm Honorable sure. Kilu? I'm a teacher, I know. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Go I'm ahead. already informed. Go ahead. So I wanted to apologize uh, for coming late. Somebody from my village decided to rape and kill his class 8 daughter. He killed it two, and the two have been taken to hospital. That's why I was late, Honorable Speaker. Uh, on the issue of the bursary, allow me to, to say that uh, all what the Honorable Members have been communicating to me, have been communicating to the Chief Officer. And allow me to let the Members know that you cannot imagine that the checks were ready as at 20th of December. And we had good arrangements with the chief officer so that we can launch at one particular ward and then disburse to the uh, MCAs to give the checks. What happened later, what changed, I can't tell. But he told me that he had instructions that he should follow what was laid, uh, the calendar of the deputy governor. You, on you're, the now, issuance you're of now addressing the house as the chairperson of the education committee. Surely, yes. Okay. I'm giving the right information that uh, the checks were ready and we had a good arrangement. Actually, we had agreed that let the checks be the MCAs before 2nd, so that as the pupils or students live by that, every student has his or her check. But that one never happened. Later, I was given another program that we were supposed to, to follow. Actually, I think I was the last to be given uh, the checks with him, uh, Honorable Ketuko from... Uh, so allow me to say that uh, the process that we used or that was used was the worst ever because the checks were delayed. Somebody is in Tana River, someone given 2,000 shillings, you use 3,000 to take 2,000 checks. That is unbearable. So allow me to say that, uh, as the members have said, it is the worst process. Again on the same, as they are saying, uh, on the senator's issue, in fact, what she's uttering is not the right words to be used. 
by a senator and <laughs> uh, let me not use that term by a senator and a honorable member of our age because at times we may be, we may be uh, forced to use tough words on her which is not good but let her come down let her use the right language on honorable members thank you honorable speaker thank you honorable kilo honorable kaluma Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, because of uh, this opportunity. First, I want to applaud Honorable Ellen for coming up with this uh, statement. Honorable Speaker, now that my time is only one minute, I want to applaud God. Yeah? Because a miracle has happened, a twin miracle. Yeah? which has exposed two personalities eh, who are about to lead our account and they might lead it into destiny. Honorable Speaker, we are now the prophet. Eh? Let now us honorable members go out and uh, spread the gospel that uh, two personalities are messy in this account. And the Honourable Speaker, they should not be given any opportunity to lead the count in anything. Uh, I want to, to remind Honourable Majority and Honourable Deputy Majority on this issue of statement as far as uh, the utterances of the, the Senator are concerned. We do it immediately. And in the same, we question the level of education, which was also questioned. Because as a count, uh, I think the nation, Kenya, is doubting Majako's count and the kind of senator we have. But Speaker, I don't know whether there is a process where uh, this assembly can write to her to tell her she has a role and she has a seat in all the assemblies in Majako's count. Because I don't think whether she knows so that she can come and sit there and tell her something before we take her to the cani tea for a cup of tea and tell her who she is. Otherwise, <laughs> honorable speaker, we cannot be cut short. And I was also applaud the speaker and the Machakos count in general because of Cha Kimwe, Kijua, eh? Cha Kimwe. I want us also to have a statement eh, here so that we can include our vernacular at times when we are addressing ourselves so that we can emphasize the points the way Honorable Alice has done. Hmm? So that it can be allowed. Eh? Otherwise, Honorable Speaker, we are bitter about the bursaries. And somebody has killed himself, thinking that he is resurrecting himself. <laughs> and somebody that does not follow anybody because of a, 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 a child, if my child comes and says, eh, I am not good, think it twice. Don't just abuse the child. The child knows me better because I have brought because some people cannot stay with the other. One minute because is over, uh, Honorable Kalubu. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. We don't want uh, the, the chair of the speaker to be messed up by anybody. Let it that somebody stay where she is, waiting. Honorable Kalubu, thank you, Honorable Bete. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm Honorable Betty, representing the great people of Masi. Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to thank Honorable Ellen for the statement that she has brought. Honorable Speaker, about the disbursement of the bursaries, I think it was a big blow to us all the elected honorable members. Like in my place, uh, when they brought issues and the deputy governor had given instructions that the village are the means and the water the means are the ones to disperse the checks which were left behind. 
I want to take this opportunity and thank Honorable Margaret Mwikali. She fought and she stood firm and told the Deputy Governor that the elected member of Masi is Honorable Betty. So the check should be given to our office. And Madam Speaker, it was noisy. And because Margaret Mwikali doesn't go behind, she had to fight until the last minute. Honorable Speaker, it was unfortunate because the Deputy Governor thought that he's going to gain some mileage in the bursaries, of which we know this is the right of the people. It is not a favor. It is their right for the education of our people. So, Madam Speaker, I would wish that this could not be repeated again. And now I would wish still we engage the Deputy Governor and tell us more about the bursaries because since we came into this assembly, Madam Speaker, there were some financial years that we had passed a budget of three million per ward, and we've never gotten anything equivalent to that. So that is something that the Deputy Governor should be answerable because he's the same person who is the CC Finance and tell us more about the bursaries. On the other hand, it's about our Honorable Senator. Madam Speaker, it is unfortunate if uh, our Senator could stand before the congregation and especially when people are mourning and attack the assembly, including the Speaker herself. And Honorable House, this Honorable House I know, when we got into this assembly, we had a lot of fights. And one thing I want to congratulate you, it is an achievement. People may not see it, but I know it is something that you did. You went an extra mile to call the bishops to come together and intervene within the, uh, for the handshake of the executive and the assembly. And at the end of the day, we got peace. And there was peace in Machakos County. I requested, personally, when I heard these utterances, I requested the Honorable Senator Enoch Kiyo and Honorable Senator Junior Mutula to at least sit with our governor and at least enlighten her more about her role as the senator within the Machakos County. To because sit, To sit with your governor? Or? No, with the other colleague senators. Maybe she was not given the roles at, at least to come on light and know her role as the senator within the county. And Madam Speaker, it is unfortunate if she's trying to dig a hole of politics to us. And I want to ask Majority Leader, kindly, let us address this issue, because if we're going to keep quiet, it will be very hard for us to go back to the electorate, and they'll ask us, why did you not respond? If this is what she was trying to talk about you, or else to speak about you, it was not true. So Majority Leader, please and the Honorable House, let us come out as a whole assembly of Machakos County. It does not matter which party, and we address this, this, this once and for all, because it is affects us all. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Mulatia, you had something to say? Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Honorable Tarek Mulatia uh, from Masinga Central. Mine uh, goes direct to the Senator. What she's doing is not right. It's very wrong. Because uh, you see, our voters are very funny. Once you tell them something which is not true, that is what they like. And what she's saying, it is very wrong. I watched when she was, I think, in Kangundo or at Nyanzi's place. You know when you are telling people that you are eating their money, those people can even arm that that MCA. Yes, Madam Speaker. Honorable Nyanzi. Yes. Of Kalama Ward. So, Madam Speaker, I'm also trying to uh, plead with the majority leader. I know he's able and uh, minority leader. Let us first think while we are issuing this statement for the sake of a uh, re election of all, uh, members of this assembly. Let us approach this issue very well. Because once we start fighting with her in public, she's going to do more harm to us than we'll do to her. So this, this, this issue should be handled very well. I think she should be summoned to come and sit down with us. Maybe she's, she's doing this because of lack of knowledge. She has her seat right here. She could have been coming to this house, address the house, but what she's doing is very wrong. And she's going to cause a lot of damage to 
almost all of us in this house. The other thing is about the, the bursary. I think uh, Honorable Maliti is totally out of order to go down there. You know, he's also carrying other aspirants. If you don't support Mendelo Chap Chap, he will pick somebody there and go disperse the bursary with that person. So I think uh, these two leaders are totally out of order and we need to check it very well. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. So, honorable members, uh, with your sentiments on the issue of the disbursement of bus rates, the exercise that uh, ended just a few days ago, the statement by the Honorable Helen, the Helen is committed to the Committee on Education, and the committee should report to this house within 14 days, noting the importance of the exercise. So, Honorable Kilo and your committee, we, the House is expecting that report on or before the 9th of February, 2022. Thank you. The next statement by Honorable Patrick Tuko. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am Honorable Patrick Tuko, MCA for Ndidine Ward. I have a statement on service delivery in county health facilities. Honorable Speaker, Article 431A of the Constitution of Kenya, 2010, provides that every person has the right to the highest attainable standard of health, which includes the right to healthcare services, inclu including reproductive healthcare. Further, the fourth schedule of the same constitution mandates county governments with matters of county health facilities and pharmacies, ambulance services and promotion of primary healthcare. Honorable Speaker, it is worth noting that the, uh, for the last three months, our county health facilities have not been providing medical services to the residents of this county because of lack of non-pharmaceutical supplies, drugs among other key supplies. Honorable Speaker, pass one to stand in order number 41, sub order 2C. I wish to seek this statement. What the county department of health and emergency services is doing to address the following issues in our county health facilities. One, payment of contract and services, that is cleaning and security. Two, payment of utilities, that is water and electricity. Payment of CHVs, whose allocation was at four million in the fiscal year 2020-2021 and the similar amount in the current financial year. S four, supply of non-pharmaceuticals. Five, supply of drugs. And lastly, and not the least, promotion of medical workers. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay, so honorable members, in a similar manner, this is a statement that is sought on the status of the health services in the county. And I will ask if there are any members who have comments on the Honorable Ndawa, you are out of order. The speaker is still addressing the house. You're putting up your hand and you're making noise. Let's be orderly. So honorable members, I was saying that this is the statement that has been sought by the Honorable Kituku on the status of the health in the county. And that being the case, it is for the members who wish to comment before we commit the statement to the committee that is to process it. Who are the members who wish to make any comments? Honorable Majority Leader. Honorable Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Let me first congratulate the Honorable Member of Ndivini, uh, Honorable Getuku,
for seek, seeking this statement. Honorable Speaker, this statement could have come even last month in December. Honorable Speaker, it is actually very, very pathetic in our hospitals and in dispensaries, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as far as this House is concerned under your leadership, we have never denied executive any budget. Honorable Speaker, it is only six months, not even six months, it's only about five months down the line after we gave the executive um, a budget of 12 billion Kenya shillings. Department of the Health, Honorable Speaker, received 4 billion Kenya shillings. That was five months ago. Honorable Speaker, as you are talking now, and today, not about the drugs, we are talking about the symbol, symbol utilities like gloves in our hospitals, nindus in our hospitals, Honorable Speaker. In my area, that is Kenania Ward, where I come from, we have Kenania Dispensary, Chumbi Dispensary. I'm using my money, which is very little, just to buy the small commodities like nindus and gloves, Honorable Speaker. This statement of Keilu, Honorable Keilu, Honorable Speaker, uh, sorry, Kituku, Honorable Speaker, it is, I'm not going to say it is timely. We have been facing this from, from, from November. Three months. Our people have been suffering when we have given the executive four billion shillings on health sector. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we even, not even the drugs, we have other services, like electricity, uh, we have water bills. Madam Speaker, our hospitals actually are being disconnected from electric supply. A good example is Matu Level 4 Hospital, which serves even part of Getui. We don't have power. What do you expect? The newborns who are born in that hospital, they will die. What do you expect? The old women who are going to that hospital, they will die. Madam Speaker, this is a very serious and a grave matter. When a government cannot sustain health services to its people, it is as dead as, it's as, dead as a dog. Honorable Speaker, let me use that word. Because we are suffering, our people are dying, and nobody in the executive was thinking about it, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I'm just talking about the Matu, which is a case, which is uh, the media should even report correctly. I'm talking about a Timbonian dispensary, where I come from. There's no power for the last four months. So there's nothing going on there. Watchmen are not paid. I'm paying watchmen to take care of what is remaining in that hospital. Madam Speaker, this is something which this House need to take action immediately. This even make, we can make somebody, we can impeach somebody because of this. And the honorable members, let me tell you, we are remembering it only six months. These issues, Kavindu is talking, the Senate is talking, and you are quiet on these things yourself, then it's upon you. Because some of them are correct. What are we doing as members of this uh, I mean assembly? Have we impeach somebody? Have we support somebody? We must do that. This is the right time, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we had that out of that budget of four billion, we had given the allocation. Budget, budget is four point three billion. Four point three billion, sorry. Four point three billion on the sector, 
there was some money which was payment which was supposed to go to CH fees. Who are taking care of our people and they have not been paid for the last uh, two years. Honorable Speaker, what did we have? They were paid. They were paid for only one month, 2,500 each. Where is the balance? This house should in call the health, I mean the, the CEC, health, CEC finance, and the CEOs to explain what happened after this house have done what we are supposed to do. Because our work is to pass the budget. Honorable Speaker, I'm talking with a lot of bitterness because um, uh, last week I lost a child in Kenania because there were no drugs, there was nothing, and then they, even the nurses are saying, buy gloves first before we handle. Because, of course, they are human beings. There is also still corona. Let me tell you, Honorable Speaker, and I understand our governor is somewhere resting on holiday in Australia or Dubai when our people are suffering. This is not good, Honorable Speaker. Members of this house, you must come out and know that these are the people elected you. Whether in Dubai, you lose a fort. And we should team up with both sides, Honorable Kamitu, both sides, and make sure the remaining six months we have done something. Let us impeach somebody to set an example to others. Because, Honorable Speaker, all other departments are not even working. The 15 million project, Honorable Speaker, there's nothing going on the ground. Why do we pass a budget then if there's nothing going to happen in awards to our people? We have, if, if, the, if the budget is mismanaged, our work, we have the powers to impeach, to impeach even the entire cabinet. Even the entire cabinet. And then we remain without that. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minority Leader. Honorable Deputy Speaker, I'll come to you, Honorable Majority Whip, then Honorable Ndawa. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. My name is Honorable Museku. I represent the great people of Mumbuni North. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank the Honorable Member, Honorable Patrick Ketuku, for bringing this very important statement uh, on matters held before the floor of this House. Madam Speaker, without health, health is the basis for everything. If you do not have a healthy people, then you do not have anything. Health is the one single resource which you can be able to ensure it is. Resources are provided to, for it to be sustained, if at all development and any other items are going to be achieved by our people. In recognition to that, this honorable house every year, and for the current financial year, as the Honorable Majority Leader said, approved a budget of 4.3 billion shillings out of a total budget of 12 billion. It tells you that more than a third of the entire budget went to the health, health uh, sector, a third of the budget, implying the importance to which this Honorable House puts on ensuring that, to ensure that our people on the ground are granted every single uh, assistance they can get to remain healthy. But as speaker, there is nothing as stressful as a people to stay without knowing where they can be able to go when they fall sick. There is nothing as serious as somebody to take their loved one to an hospital funded by the government and expecting to get assistance from that hospital in terms of treatment and drugs, they get treated and they are told to go and buy the drugs. Poor people coming from home, carrying their old aged people who have come to hospital, are forced to go and buy drugs with money they do not have. But I'm speaker, it leaves a lot to question what has happened to the 4.3 billion we allocated. In addition to that, Madam Speaker, the, the national government allocates an additional 386 million shillings as support for level five. 
Level 5 support is given 396 million shillings to every single level 5, Machakos being one of them. A statement was sought before this house, which I believe has not yet been answered, for us to get a breakdown on how the 306 million is utilized by the department when we are saying that there are no drugs. I followed up this inquiry with the uh, Department of Finance on the same. And one of the issues which I've learned is that whereas the department seems to be blaming the finance department of non-payment, the Department of Finance says they need to be given one single requisition from the Department of Health which they have not honored. So if there is no one single requisition which has not been honored, and we say we don't have drugs, then the department, together with the finance department, need to be summoned to this house to explain to us if money is there, requisitions are not being done, and our people do not have drugs, what is happening? Who does not seem to know what they are doing? We receive an additional 24 million shillings. User fees, for a gone user fees, by Danida, to assist those people who might not be able to clear their bills when they are admitted in hospitals. What happens to these funds? We passed a law, an act in this assembly, which stated that funds need to be plowed back. The monies which are being collected in level threes and, le and level twos, level threes and below, and levels fours, level threes, need to be plowed back. How do you have an institution which is collecting money from the public, for example, you pay money for gloves, it is taken, it is receipted, you pay money for needles and all those other facilities, it is taken, it is receipted, and when you come the next time, there are no needles, there are no gloves. What happened to the money which you paid? That's why we say it needed to be plowed back for those people to be able to utilize those, those funds. We have the issue of service, uh, the cleaners. A petition has been brought before this house by cleaners in the level five facility who have downed their tools because they have gone for eight, nine months without being paid by their employer. We know that these services are contracted and the contractor who, is, uh, who has been contracted to, 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 to provide these services is getting paid every month Yet the same is not being passed over to the people who are doing the cleaning. So where is that money going? Who is holding that contractor accountable in the executive? We have the community health service providers, formerly be, we, we, we used to call them before uh, community health volunteers. Now they are community health service providers, of which we provided in this house 84 million shillings for them to be paid. I understand they have only been paid for two months. The rest of the amounts of money, if it has been requisitioned, we don't know where it has gone. So, Madam Speaker, these issues which are being raised here are weighty issues, and they are issues which we need to get to the bottom of it. Our people's health comes first. Honorable, Our honorable DS. Yes, Madam Speaker. Sorry to interact with you. I mean, to interfere with your submissions. I'm just wondering, do we have a problem with the Hansard room? Ordinarily, we are on YouTube. And the importance of that is to let the public know what is happening in this house. Why is it that we appear to be off online on YouTube? Can you find out what is happening in the Hansard room? This is a matter that cannot be discussed without the involvement and information of the public. There has been a lot of hue and cry about the health status in this county. And we invested on communication. It is the right of the public 
to know what is happening in this house. I'm not told if there's any problem with our handset. Article 196 of the Constitution. We can proceed, Honorable Diaz. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. In conclusion, therefore, what I would like to say is that we need the executive to be a little bit more sensitive to the interests of our people. This Honorable House has allocated a budget and approved a very high budget of 4.3 billion to ensure our people are healthy. The national government has given that department 386 million to support level five. We don't know what happened to these funds. Danida supports use of it gone to the tune of 24 million. We do know every year we don't know what, the, what those funds have been, how those funds have been used. We have put laws in place in this assembly to ensure that fees which are collected in level threes, level fours and level threes, are plowed back. To ensure that those facilities, the money they have, can keep on going, rotating there for them not to keep on requesting for small things like gloves. That seems not to have been implemented. As I understand, the funds are still going to the CRIF and not being plowed back into those institutions. We've talked about community health volunteers, whom we have said need to be paid, we provided funds, 84 million, for them to be able to be paid. We understand they want to be paid for two months. What has happened to the monies for the rest of the period? The cleaners who are working in these hospitals have not been paid. Level five, they have downed their tools. They brought a petition before the house, finding out whether, why they have not been paid by the service provider, who is being paid on a monthly basis. One of them called me after that and told me we were called and told to report back to work. If we don't report back to work, they'll be sacked. And they were asking me, how do we report back without being paid first? We don't have bus fare. Our houses have been closed. We have been living in houses where we have uh, the, uh, we are rendered facilities. They have been closed. Our children have been sent away from school. And now you tell us to report back or be sacked. These issues, Madam Speaker, in summary, are the issues we need to ensure that we, as a house, summon the chief officer or the CC in charge of health, and also the CC in charge of finance, to come and appear before this honorable house and explain to it all these facilities which they have been given, why our people suffering without drugs and without essential items. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable uh, DS. Honorable Mita Padum, for a while, let's have Honorable Minority Leader. who will come to you. Uh, thank you very much, our Honorable Speaker. Once again, I'm Alex Kamito, MCA Tala, Ward and Leader of Minority, that is, the eyes of the government. Uh, Madam Speaker, this is, a, uh, this is a, a very heavy statement in regard to health care of Machakos electorate. Madam Speaker, as the leader of minority in this house, there is one thing that I cannot stand here and cheat the, the assembly uh, because as an elected member of Tala Ward, I've got these facilities in my ward. And as you are speaking, Madam Speaker, now, the facility that is Sengani Health Center, Chaume uh, Dispensary, 
and the surrounding facilities, its facilities within Matungulu. We have no uh, drugs. We have no supply of drugs. And uh, as I said, I cannot just sit here and cheat the, 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 the assembly. I've been calling the executive as the minority leader and as their representative in this house. Madam Speaker, we could be hearing from the governor's council when they meet that uh, the central government is not giving out money. We could also be hearing from the senator that uh, she communicated with the executive and that there's no money all over in the 47 counties. But procedurally, Madam Speaker, I was in the, I was in the government. And the government, that is from uh, the control of budget, it is dispersing money to the counties, Madam Speaker. That is the truth. So what is happening within Machakos County that uh, money for the department is not coming? So Madam Speaker, also us as an assembly, procedurally we have got the authority also to give us, to be given the breakdown from the control of budget, the money that has been dispersed to this county so that we may know in each department they have been given this money because that is procedural. There's nothing to be reserved. There's nothing to be hidden, Madam Speaker. So on that note, Madam Speaker, it is true. Money has been, money for the health facility has been given. And uh, we want her. And why should you be wondering, Madam Speaker? This time, I'm bitter. As a son of Machakos County, the people are not being given the services and money is being disposed. And if there is any, 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 any person who is refuting that money is not being dispersed to the government, then they should come up with the documents because there is a documentary evidence that money has been given to this county for the, uh, for, 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 the, for the department, Madam Point Speaker. Point of information. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, let me inform my non leader that in December we received 700 million from control on budget. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Proceed, Honorable. Thank you, our majority. The information is yeah. confirming what the minority leader is saying. Thank you. So, Madam Speaker, you're also hearing that, uh, we, I mean, not hearing, we're also confirming that in December, 700 million were given to this country. So should we, should we be wondering as an assembly? My stand and my appeal to this assembly, Madam Speaker, is that we should now summon the CC Finance and the Chief Executive, I mean, and the Chief Officer Finance. The Chief Officer in charge of health care of the medical services in Machakos so that now they can give us the breakdown because it is our right to demand that money that has been given by the central government, how are they dispersed to the various departments so that we may be talking on the informed position that we were given this money, money that, meant is for, I mean, that, uh, uh, money that was meant for the hospitals, how are they distributed to the various facilities that are level four, I mean level five, level four, up to the health centers and up to the dispensaries. It is as simple as that, because so that we may be, it is not as simple as that. So, the, so that, Madam Speaker, we should be making statements in an informed position, because it is the right of us, and it is the right for the members of the assembly to fight for their right to because the central government is giving out money. I stop there to say I'm very bit on that, and we should be on our note to summon those people who are even getting salaries, who are paid to give services to the electorate of Machakos. And I'm talking this as a senior citizen who might care for my people in Machakos County. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable Mita. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for granting me the opportunity to also contribute to this uh, statement. I want to thank Honorable Patrick Etuko for coming up with, uh, with this statement, Madam Speaker. I also want to echo uh, uh, Honorable 
uh, Paul Moseko's uh, contribution that uh, there, is, there was a statement which I sought last December, actually on 22nd, uh, on the same. But uh, my colleague had touched much on the statement which I had sought. And uh, Honorable Speaker, I, I would uh, want to request you to, to make a ruling that uh, we take this matter on uh, health in our county with much efforts, Madam Speaker. Honorable Speaker, uh, it's true as uh, my colleagues have uh, contributed, things are going south. And not only in the health uh, department, but Honorable Speaker, in all other departments. Madam Speaker, indeed, sometimes back, we queried qualifications of the finance minister in our county. And this Honorable House, Honorable Speaker, went ahead and actually impeached the CCM Finance Machakos County. That was in 2019, Madam Speaker. We had seen all these signs, Madam Speaker, as much as it was politicized. We had known the CCM Finance Machakos County doesn't have qualifications to run matters related to finance, Honorable Speaker. We did the Honorable thing. We requested the governor to bring on board a CCM finance who had know-how on matters related to finances. Madam Speaker, as we speak now, the county, of Ma the county government of Machakos is in total mess. That's why the Auditor General is always flagging our reports because whatever we are taking there is not worth from our county government. Honorable Speaker, my colleagues, some are, uh, some are not coming out very clear. The best thing we can do, Madam Speaker, as early as today, is to impeach again the Finance Minister and the entire Finance Department, Honorable Speaker. Because for how long will our people keep on suffering? It's enough, Madam Speaker. And I want to urge this honorable house. We sign whatever we can sign and send the deputy, the, 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 the finance minister home so that we can have someone who has qualifications and who can straighten matters related to finance in our county, Madam Speaker. On the same, honorable speaker, I, I want to get out of what mo ma 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 most of our people are saying, and I want to thank the entire team which is working in our health facilities, Madam Speaker. Our nurses, our doctors, every time things go south, they are the ones who are bearing the blames, Madam Speaker. They are stressed. They are under duress to perform because every complaint is being guided to them and not to the finance department, Madam Speaker. I want to thank them for the far they have done, for what they have done. And what I can wish them is that this honorable house will fight for their rights and that they will be working in the right environment as they serve our people, honorable speaker. I come from a ward which serves a level four hospital. Every time, as early as seven in the morning, even six in the morning, as late as midnight, I'm getting calls, I'm getting uh, SMSs from people who are stranded in hospitals. Because what do you expect that nurse to do? How does she or he serve you without the proper gadgets? We want to be served. There is maybe a theater. They cannot operate without a glove, Madam Speaker. What do they do? Others have gone to their pockets until they are tired. Now they have to pass the burden to the patient or the relatives. Madam Speaker, in Kangundo Level 4, 
there is an ambulance which lacks fuel. And actually, we have come up with a local arrangement. Madam Speaker, so unfortunate. When that ambulance brings a patient at Machakos, we fuel 2,000. There is a petrol station, honorable members. And that's how bad things are. And our finance CM is crisscrossing Machakos campaigning. Like I asked last time, yes, you are campaigning, but we will vote for you. They all have been died. So, Honorable Speaker, we lack priority. Those guys, the people who are there, they, they are not human enough. They have the personal interests, Madam Speaker. There is nothing much we can do other than now, going forward, sending back the CCM home. Let him go home. And Honorable Speaker, also, we would want to know, because when we impeach the CCM finance, a case was taken to court. We didn't have ill feelings on anyone, but what we were seeking is the right person to be in that department. Honorable Speaker, as we speak right now, anybody in the finance department is running, collecting revenue for personal gains. And that's why these things are coming here. They are not collecting re uh, uh, revenue for the county. They are collecting revenue for their own gains. Right from the CCM to the directors in the finance department. These people are buying properties, left, right. They are constructing apartments, left, right, Madam Speaker. How I wish we can even hold it. Their lifestyles, Madam Speaker. You can initiate a program without it, anybody in the finance department, so that we know the properties they have acquired. We know the salary of a director. We know a salary of a chief officer. How can you, within a very short time, come up with a land and you construct an apartment? Honorable Speaker, before our people send us home, let us send people home. That should be the message. Before I get that exam on 8th of, or 9th of August this year, let me take someone through an exam today or tomorrow. Honorable Speaker, the consultants in our hospitals have left. We don't have consultants in our hospitals. They have all gone. They are demoralized. There is no morale. When you go there, you face a patient. You want to help, but you cannot help. That patient is in pain. As a human being, the best you can do, because that will also give you stress, is to leave. So, Honorable Speaker, we are losing the right people who should be serving our people. As we speak right now, only yesterday, I came to realize the MOH for Kangundo, level 4 hospital, is in South Africa. She didn't have anything to do other than to seek a leaf so that she can go and read. Because whatever she is doing here, he is not giving her any return, Honorable Speaker. The other day she had resigned. I had to intervene. When I intervened, she told me the working condition is not favorable. What do I do? People are coming here, they are crying, others are dying. What do I do? Do I look at them? Madam Speaker, it's so painful. It's very painful. Honorable members, I'm ready to sign. I'm ready to bring the motion. Let all those people in the finance department go home. Let's get fresh blood, which can bring revenue to our people, who can collect revenue, because there is, there is revenue. Honorable Speaker, uh, I think I'll reach there. And before I conclude, I also want to bring to the attention of this house that the chief officer in charge of level four and level five has been in acting capacity for two, over two years, Honorable Speaker. And I can, stay, can, I can state here with authority that that chief officer is being used as a conduit to loot money in that Department of Health, Honorable Speaker. They are making quotations. They are making invoices which are not there. And money is coming and they are taking it away. May the blood of those people who are suffering be on them, Honorable Speaker. Thank you.
Honorable Ndawa. Thank you, Honorable Mita. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My name is Judas Dawa, the MCA from Batu Ward. Mrs. Ma Madam Speaker, I will start by congratulating my brother, Honorable Ketuko, for coming up with this statement, Madam Speaker. In fact, we were thinking of coming with an urgent matter of common voters. But now, the statement is serving the purpose. Madam Speaker, it is evident that we are not, as a county and Department of Health, we are not ending in the right direction. Madam Speaker, as we talk now, as we talk now, all the health facilities within Machakos County were to be disconnected from power today. They started with Matu. There is a bill of 1.6 million. They were to disconnect Machakos. Machakos has a bill of 20 million. They were to go to Mwala, Kangundo, and Kadiani. Madam Speaker. All these level four hospitals, including the level five, have operational theaters, each operation of operating. You cannot, a doctor or the, the, the person who does the operation, cannot perform the duty without having clear sight. There must be sufficient light to have that operation undertaken. Madam Speaker, I was very much, very much a ballast when I heard from the medicine too calling me and telling me that the power has been disconnected. Madam Speaker, the issue of fuel. We have a standby generator, which is very okay. But standby generator can also go off. So, Madam Speaker, we have kids, we have porters who are in our, in, in our, in our, in our incubators. If the power is not there, it means now we risk losing these lives. Madam Speaker, I am requesting the House the issue of negligence. Negligence is either committed by omission or commission. You are required to do a certain task and you fail to do it. You are required to do a certain task and you do it wrongly or you delay doing it. Madam Speaker, that issue of negligence has to be cited against officers who are making this hospital to be disconnected with the power because that is now risking the lives of ourselves, the lives of our parents, the lives of our kids. Madam Speaker, today we have good news moving up, coming in, moving up, coming in. Thank you. was brought to two level four hospital about three days ago. She was to undergo this years. The lady has nothing. The parents have disappeared. She is just there. The doctor was supposed to do that operation, but there were no drugs. There is what we call asthesia. Asthesia. That is a drug that is administered to somebody so that he or she can sleep so that the, the operation can be done. So the doctor was forced to go and take those drugs from a certain chemist on a credit. On credit, they did the operation. By good luck, the lady is safe and the child is safe. Now they have discharged the patient, but they cannot allow her to move out of the hospital unless the debt is paid. Madam Speaker, was I elected by my two people to come here, and when I get my salary, if they have an issue there, I spend the salary to take care of, the, of them. <laughs> Madam Speaker, this is not acceptable at, at, all, at, all, at all. It is not acceptable at all, at, all, at, all, at all. As we talk, Madam Speaker, we have had, by so I knew we, we gave about 4.3 billion. And I want to demonstrate here, maybe some members don't know what is a billion. Maybe they don't know. Madam Speaker, Madam, Madam Speaker, one billion is money which can be spent by a child from day one, the date of birth, up to the 30th anniversary, each day spending 100,000. <laughs> Born today, 100,000. The following day, 100,000. Up to 30 years. That is what we call one billion. The difference will be only 8,000. So if we talk of 4.3 billion, 
plus the 380 something, which was given to my two, need to, to my Jagos level five, it means that it's close to five billion. Madam Speaker, I wonder. I was forced by the council to go to media so that I can air what is happening because if we had this problem, it is going to out on us. Madam Speaker, our people have suffered what we call in Julia Sindam Nam. And also others have suffered what we call Sindam Nam Sin in Julia. That is whereby somebody suffers both injury and damage. If you lose somebody because of somebody's negligence, we cannot recover that life. The members have gotten, have received the damage because they lost the member. Their hearts have been injured. So, Madam Speaker, I think you should now take somebody to court. We should take somebody to court because if the assembly did its job, we gave the budget. In Matu, I'm very sure we are located in Matu about 12 million. They were only given one disbursement. They were only given money once, and that is in July. And the money which was given to Matu, it is as if it was a conditional disbursement. Because after the money was given, other instructions followed the money. Pay so and so. Pay so and so. So the money. The, the hospital itself. The managers of the hospitals, because we have hospital boards in every, every level four. They don't have the autonomy to say we are going to spend this money on this. Somebody else is calling. Say so and so. So, Madam Speaker, I want to say here categorically, some of the contractors who have been given contract to serve in those facilities belong to very senior government officers here. And that is why they are calling to say, pay so and so. Madam Speaker, my membership is now thinking of resigning from the position. And that membership is somebody whom I call an asset to us. It is somebody who can handle administrative matters. He can sit down and issue and address issues of administrative. It is somebody who can go to ward, see patients, changing drugs, and it's judge who does what? Okay. And it is somebody who can go to theater and conduct an operation. That is somebody who has what we call flexibility, which is a very key thing in human resource. If we lose that particular resource, because we have human resource, officers are human resource. Madam Speaker, the issue of health should not be joked about by anyone, regardless of the position he or she is holding. Madam Speaker, we have these community health workers, whom we call them volunteers. How can somebody volunteer today, volunteer tomorrow, the year after the other, the other year, and that particular person has kids. Has kids that is supposed to pay fees. Maybe he's living in a landed house. How will that particular person survive honestly? And by the way, in our constitution, for how long are you supposed to volunteer? It is not captured anywhere in the constitution. So if somebody has said for the first week, the second week, we ought to have at least said, he, we are going to allocate this amount for this particular officer. Now the government, now the government is now moving out. We are come, another government is coming in. Maybe the government that will come, or the officers will come, will not understand the language that was used when we were engaging these people. And if now it comes that we all go home, these people will have nothing to show. I worked for this period and it is a great consideration. Madam Speaker, I totally, I totally agree with my colleagues who have spoken before me. If, we, if, if the only solution is to, to sacrifice somebody, let that be done so that we can so, so that we can be able to save our lives and also save ourselves. It is very unfair. Very unfair. Instead of us working, we are in the field campaigning. campaigning. 
who told us that will be there that time. Life is given by God. And you can confirm, you cannot confirm that you will be there that time. Let us do the work until the end of the contract. Then after the contract, we can now offer ourselves for the election. What we call theft, Madam Speaker. Theft is not going to an attorney to a room and break to seek something. If you are given a certain task to do, and you fail to do that task, and you are receiving thoroughly, that is theft. That is theft. Madam Speaker, we have Matu, me, Machakos level five here, which was given by which was given money by the government, national government. Was, Museko talked about three eight something million. We are bringing our patient from our level four hospital. Instead of bringing them to Majakos level five, this can we are sent to private nini. clinics and private nini. Is that owner of that private clinic more stable than the county itself? And that particular person has not gotten any funding from anywhere. This is a big joke. This is a big joke. And we are not going to allow, we are not going to allow this thing to continue. I understand the CEC health is also contesting. And maybe it's about to resign. There is no need of waiting until 9th February. If you are serious with your campaign, resign today. Go home, let's have somebody who can take care of our lives, who can take care of the lives of our people. I don't want to talk much, Madam Speaker. In fact, I not, I not contribute the other statement because I was bitter about this statement. That is why I not even raise my hand on the other statement. The issue of health, it is not a privilege, it is a constitutional right for every Kenya to get the best Constitutional right, not any, not any privilege. So let nobody infringe in our constitutional right. Otherwise, that particular person will face the wrath of the people. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honorable members, uh, I am of the mind that we just proceed and do what is necessary. Remember, we still have other business on the table. I, I think it is a shared experience in the whole county, and I don't think it will be any different. But because I know Honorable Masesi has been the chair of the health committee, you can contribute just in a minute or so. Uh, because thank I'm you. about to commit this matter to a committee. Thank you, Madam, for allowing me to contribute. My name is Honorable Cosmos Masesi, Matungulu Eastward. Madam Speaker, I've always said that uh, we should not in any way compromise matters health. Madam Speaker, is a matter of life and death. Madam Speaker, my opinion is different from Honorable Mitas and Honorable Billy's because, Madam Speaker, we know where the park stops at. Madam Speaker, if at all we are serious as members of this House, I'm calling that we impeach the governor himself. Madam Speaker, all other workers, all the other workers, including the DG, cannot question the governor about monies going to these facilities. Madam Speaker, on tenure this month, I did an uh, uh, audio on media, and exactly the following day, which was on 11th, our governor called a meeting and they promised that they have uh, agreed on the way forward. But exactly, Madam Speaker, nothing happened to our facilities. Madam Speaker, all our opponents in terms of the aspirants are riding us very easily when it comes to matters health. Because if you ask a congregation, do you have medicine? Is there anything in lab? Madam Speaker, our, res our residents are very bitter. I wish, Madam Speaker, we could take and hold it and go to a private hospital somewhere here and take the list of all the referrals. All those patients coming there are coming from the public hospitals, either for x-rays, tests, and to make the matter worse, Madam Speaker, a single room in Kangundo, where they border the level four, has all the tests where a public facility like level four, Madam Speaker, cannot afford. 
Madam Speaker, I wish next week, because uh, we have Seke by us, I wish, Madam Speaker, we could unite as one house for the interest of our people. And Madam Speaker, press our last button to matters health. It's better, Madam Speaker, we don't do development, but we don't compromise matters health. Madam Speaker, surprisingly, we have not been doing development owing to the fact that we are paying these spending bills. But Madam Speaker, I want to tell you in Kangundo Level 4, the, where I take milk, Madam Speaker, that those farmers owe Kangundo more than 800,000 for milk, which was served in between 2013 to 2017. And they have not been paid. Madam Speaker, even the health workers are, going, are taking strong tea. They can't even afford milk within these facilities. So I'm calling on the members. And I know that one day God will judge us right. Because we were given that mandate to talk for our people and represent our people. Let us do this right to save the lives of our people in Machakos County. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Okay. Do you have any member who may want to come? The final one, as I close this matter, Honorable Betty. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Again, I'm Honorable Betty, representing the great people of Masi. Madam Speaker, I want to thank Honorable Kituko for this statement. I just wanted to share an experience, experience that I experienced on Saturday last weekend. Then, Madam Speaker, I, rece I received a call from Masi that there was a minor who gave birth at Masi. And it was unfortunate that uh, there was nothing to offer in the dispensary. So she was transferred to a private hospital there in Masi. Madam Speaker, it was uh, a day that I said I've never experienced this because the issue was when the kid gave birth to this small baby, the baby had uh, breathing complications and there were no oxygen. And then I tried to look for an ambulance and Madam Speaker, I failed to get any response. I had to drive all the way from Machakos to Masi at around 10 p.m. And I went uh, to the hospital and I picked the mother and the baby and the mother to the baby. And then now uh, we proceeded to Machakos. <laughs> Madam Speaker, when we got to Machakos level five, I was told to go direct to the nursery so that the kid can be, the baby can be undressed. <laughs> to my surprise, we had carried a baby who was no more. And when we got there, we were told because the baby has lost his life on the way, we have to go to the police, get an OB, take back the baby there so that they can know, the, we can follow the procedure. It is unfortunate, honorable members, when we are sitting here and watching our people suffer. The Bible says that let us not live in sin for peace to be. Let us take our responsibility as the an assembly of which, Madam Speaker, I think us as an assembly, we've played our role. We gave the budget, and still there are the grants that our hospitals that they normally get. What is happening to the health of our people? As we normally get medical insurance, what about our electorates that they cannot afford the medical insurance? What are these people? In fact, I don't know whether they have a heart because it's, it's unfortunate when our people comes to the hospital and they gives us a call, especially the elected members. Unaskia mtu, sorry, you had a person calling you and a patient saying that, Mweshimiwa, I have a patient in the hospital and there is no one who can help me. Can you assist me with 5,000 that I can address the issue that I have with my patient. And Madam Speaker, our electorates don't understand that we don't have money. And when you tell someone it is not possible, now you become a name in me to your electorate. Honorable members, let us stamp our authority 
for what God given, has given us to work for our people. Let us do the things that we are supposed to do. And the rest, we leave to the executive and the CEC, who, whoever is in charge with the health. Let us know that there is a day that we shall go on that seat of a judgment and give the accountability of which each and every one of us has played. So, Madam Speaker, I think health is a right for our people and it is a must that we address this problem once and for all. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, I have uh, your sentiments on this statement have been captured on the, the hand set. And the matter is hereby committed to the Assembly's General Oversight Committee. And the timeline for reporting, the timeline for reporting is seven days. That is on or before the 1st of February 2022. Thank you. Mr. Clark, next order. Order number eight, motion, approval of the appointment of House Business Committee members for the sixth session of the Second Assembly of Machakos County. Honorable members, this is a business that is to be conducted by the Honorable Majority Leader, Mark Mwendo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, that aware that Starting order number 151, sabbatical so one, provides that the House Business Committee should be appointed at the commencement of each um, session. Aware that the committee is uh, crucial in determining how business is debated in the House and in preparation of the Assembly calendar. Noting that the House Business Committee membership should reflect uh, relative uh, majorities of the seats held by each of the assembly parties in the assembly. Aware that the nomination should make into consideration of interests of independents and aware that the parties have nominated members to serve in the House Business Committee. Further, aware that the assembly parties have nominated members to the House Business Committee. Honorable Speaker, I wish to move that motion that pursuant to standing order number 151, sabbatical 1E, e, the House approve the appointment of the following members to the House Business Committee for the sixth session of the Second Assembly of Machakos Count in addition uh, to those members specified under paragraph 1511A. B, C, and D. Honorable Speaker, these, the following are the members. Honorable Moses Meta, Honorable Frederick Modoka, Honorable Patrick Ketuku, Honorable uh, Ellen Detti, Honorable Rosina Kanini, Honorable Justice Katumo, Honorable Jack, uh, Jacqueline Ziva, Honorable uh, Anastasia Motuku, Honorable Joshua Muli, Honorable John Jikingori, Honorable Jesus Dawa. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I ask Honorable Camito, the minority leader, to second my motion. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm Alex Kamitu. I stand uh, to second the motion. Thank you. I will propose the question once I get it. I need the question to be proposed. Right, so honorable members, I now propose the question that pursuant to standing order number 1511E of the standing orders of this house, 
The House approves the appointment of the following members to the House Committee, to the House Business Committee for the sixth session of the Second Assembly of the County Assembly of Machakos, in addition to those members specified under paragraph Understanding Order 151-1, A, B, C, and D of the House Standing Orders. One, Honorable Moses Mita. Two, Honorable Frederick Mudoka. Three, Honorable Patrick Ituku. Four, Honorable Helen Detti. Five, Honorable Rosina Kanini. Six, Honorable Justice Katumo. Seven, Honorable Jacqueline Ziva. Eight, Honorable Anastasia Mutuku. Nine, Honorable Joshua Muli. Ten, Honorable George Kingori. Eleven, Honorable Judas Ndawa. Honorable members, I invite you to debate the motion. Honorable Museku. I think, Madam Speaker, thank you again for giving me uh, this opportunity. Mine is just to say, as you can see the mood in the House, it's that uh, the honorable members have agreed on the list of the members who have been uh, provided by both the majority leader and the minority leader to represent uh, the majorities in the House, in the House Business Committee. The House Business Committee is a very important committee which sets uh, the business for this House and the bylaws business for this House. And therefore, Madam Speaker, I would request that uh, since it appears like all of us are in agreement that uh, this uh, Honorable House approves, I request them to approve, that that list is is um, is uh, is uh, is presented and uh, and becomes the members who will be representing the various majorities in the House of the Committee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Members. I proceed to put the question. I pass one to Standing Order Number One One Five One One E of the Standing Orders of this House. The House approves. The appointment of the following members of the following members to the House Business Committee of the House for the sixth session of the Second Assembly of Machakos County, in addition to those members specified under Standing Order 151A, B, C, and D of the House Standing Orders. One. Honorable Moses Mita, two, Honorable Frederick Mudoka, three, Honorable Patrick Ituku, four, Honorable Helen Detti, five, Honorable Rosina Kanini, six, Honorable Justice Katumo, seven, Honorable Jacqueline Ziva, eight, Honorable Anastasia Mutuku, nine, Honorable Joshua Muli, ten, Honorable George Kingori, eleven, Honorable Judas Ndawa. As many as of the opinion say aye. As. as many as of the contrary opinion say nay, the ayes have it. Thank you. Mr. Clark, next order. Order number nine. Motion adjournment of the House. Thank you. Honorable members, this is a business that is to be prosecuted by the Honorable Majority Leader, Honorable Mark Mwendo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg to move and judgment of the House motion, Honorable Speaker, that aware that the Second Assembly commence its sixth session today, the 25th day of January 2021, pursuant to starting order number 24, Sabbatical 2, acknowledging that standing order number 24, Sabbatical 3, provides that not with its standing provisions uh, of standing order number 24, Sabbatical 1, the assembly shall continue to be in session and may adjourn for each number of days as it may uh, determine in its calendar. Honorable Speaker, aware that Standing order number 151, sabbatical 1, provides that the House Business Committee shall be appointed um, at the beginning of every session, aware that the House has just approved 
the membership uh, of our business committee, further aware that, pursuant to standing order number 151, so article 5, the committee is required to prepare calendar for the assembly and also determine the order in which reports are debated in the House among other mandates. Honorable Speaker, further aware that the assembly has scheduled to hold public participation on the Machakos Count South Eastern uh, Kenya Economic Block Bill 2021. From 20, uh, I mean from 26 to 20th in January 2022, in the wards of the county. Honorable Speaker, I wish to move the motion that the House adjourn sitting for this week to allow House Business Committee to meet and send you business for the House and also to allow honorable members to attend the public participation on second bill 2021, send you to take place in all the voting wards from 26 to 28 January 2022, and resume sitting on Tuesday, 1st in January 2021, at 10 a.m. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Majerus Leader, who is seconding your motion. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Kamitu, Minority Leader, to second my motion. Uh, thank you very much, our honorable speaker. Once again, I'm Alex Kamitu, leader of minority. Uh, Madam Speaker, as you can see, I stand to second the motion because uh, of the importance that has been documented here on the adjustment of the House by the majority leader. Uh, Madam Speaker, there is a need uh, for the House to allow the House Business Committee to meet and uh, schedule the house businesses, and at the same time, we have a very important bill, Madam Speaker. That is the second bill that, be, that should be taken to the members of the public, that is in regard to the public participation. And uh, looking at the schedule, Madam Speaker, we're only going to break to adjourn on a very short, uh, I mean a very short recess, because on 26th, 27th, and 28th, that is on Friday, we shall be doing the second uh, build uh, public participation and resume on first. So, Madam Speaker, we have no reason of uh, refusing members to have this important uh, house business and, uh, and uh, public participation. So, I stand to support the motion. Thank you, Madam Thank Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Committee, Honorable Members. I now propose the question that the House adjourns sittings for this week to allow how the House Business Committee to meet and schedule business for the House and also to allow honor the honorable members to attend a public participation on the second bill, 2021, scheduled to take place in all the 40 wards of the county from 26 to 28th January 2022 and resume sittings on Tuesday, 1st February 2022 at 10 a.m. Honorable members, I invite you to debate the motion. If you are concurring, just let me know through one of you, and I'll put the question. Honorable Katumo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, Honorable Justice Katumo, the voice. Um, uh, going by uh, that procedural motion, I mean that motion, of adjournment. I think uh, what is before us is very important uh, addressed by the motion. And therefore, I would wish to say that uh, we are in concurrence with all members that uh, we should break and do the business so that as we come back, uh, we'll go, uh, resume from where we have left. Actually, um, because of the time that we have before us, that we don't have a lot of time, and there are some businesses we want to exhaust. Uh, early enough. It is quite important that we break, we finish on that uh, public participation and uh, make we on the calendar for the House, and then we come and resume and move forward orderly uh, for the remainder of the period. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Katumo. So, any other member who has anything to say? 
Thank you. Honorable members, I now put the question that the House adjourns sitting <coughs> Excuse me. for this week to allow the House Business Committee to meet and schedule business for the House and also to allow the honorable members to attend public participation on the second bill 2021 scheduled to take place in all the 40 wards of the county from 26 to 28 January 2022 and resume settings on Tuesday 1st February 2022 at 10 a.m. As many as of the opinion say aye. aye. As many as of the contrary opinion say nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Honorable members, before I declare the adjournment, I am directing that this sitting be suspended in the usual manner that we suspend a sitting because the business that you discussed under the statement on the state of health services needs to be transacted by the General Oversight Committee urgently, which is the same committee of the members sitting here. So when we suspend the sitting, this sitting will now change into the General Oversight Committee so that we can be able to transact the business briefly, noting the short period that the committee was given to report back to the House. Sergeant Atams, can you proceed to do the necessary? Do expedite in doing the necessary. You are supposed to cover the nays as well after you lower it. Thank you. Thank you. So, honorable members, now we have uh, the General Oversight Committee of this uh, House. We shall conduct the business in the manner of committee sittings and the order paper, the table clerk. I need the order paper for the business at hand. Ordinarily, we start order papers by a prayer.